Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and this is going to be my wintry science fiction book recommendations video. So science fiction is a genre that I want to read more of but I feel quite intimidated by I think because it's such a big genre and there's so many subsections of sci-fi and because there's a lot of classic sci-fi that I feel like I need to read to really understand the genre and yeah quite a lot of big series as well and I just feel like I need to hone my taste for sci-fi before I kind of get stuck into one of those really long series but I want to read more because the science fiction books that I have read I have ended up really enjoying so I feel like it could be a genre that really works for me so yeah hopefully next year I'll get to a few more sci-fi books but yeah this video was inspired by a book that my friend lent me so he lent me a book called How High We Go in the Dark written by Sequoia Nagamastu because he thought that I would enjoy this one and this is a sci-fi book that's actually set in the Arctic Circle so I thought this is perfect for this time of year because I love to theme my books to the season so that I can fully feel immersed in each season. So I was looking for wintry books and that got me thinking about wintry sci-fi and so I started searching and I couldn't find many recommendations lists for science fiction books that have that snowy, icy, cold, wintry aesthetic. And so I decided to do a little bit of research myself and to compile this list in case you are looking for wintry sci-fi books because, yeah, as I said, I struggled to find some recommendations for this particular sort of like niche. So I hope that it's helpful to you. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump straight in with the first book, which I've already mentioned, and that is How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamastu. So this is a literary sci-fi and it follows a grieving archaeologist who travels to the Arctic Circle to continue his recently deceased daughter's work. And when he is there, he uncovers this plague, which is in the permafrost and basically as the permafrost is melting it's releasing this new plague into the world and causing a new global pandemic and I believe the book is kind of following how humanity reacts to this situation and how we continue on in the face of such adversity and yeah it sounds like it's dealing with some really heavy themes so I think I'm gonna have to be in the right mood to pick this one up but it has some fantastic reviews and I hear that it's really well written and and it says on the back, Sequoia Nagamastu takes readers on a journey spanning continents, centuries and even celestial bodies to tell a story about the resiliency of the human spirit, our infinite capacity to dream and the connective threads that tie us together in the universe. So yeah, it sounds like the author is taking on a lot with a relatively small number of pages. So I'm interested to see how that all works out. And yeah, I think this is going to be a really emotional and thought-provoking read. Okay, so the next book that I have on my list is a book called Ascension, written by Nicholas Binge. So this is a relatively recently published book, I think, and it's described as a mind-bending sci-fi thriller, and it talks about the sudden appearance of this snowy mountain that appears in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And so there's a group of scientists that go to explore this jaw-dropping mountain that's just emerged in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And as they descend further and further up the mountain, they start to lose their memories. They start to become much more paranoid and a little bit more violent. And there may or may not be some kind of creature that are following them. It sounds quite weird but in the best kind of way and yeah I'm just very intrigued by that premise. It says as kind of like the tagline, have they stumbled upon the greatest scientific discovery known to man or the seeds of their own demise? <laughs> so I feel like if that doesn't hook you I don't know what will and yeah I'm very intrigued by that one. Next up we have a classic science fiction and that is The Left Hand of Darkness written by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is an author that I really really want to try because I know that they have written a lot of very very influential works and this one gets incredibly high reviews and I understand that it takes place on a 
alien planet that has a snowy wintry aesthetic which is perfect for this time of year. So it says, it tells the story of a lone human emissary to an alien world called Winter. His goal is to facilitate Winter's inclusion in a growing intergalactic civilization, but in doing so, he has to bridge the gulf between his own views and those of the alien species. So yeah, he's obviously trying to get to know this alien species that lives on this wintry planet and trying to understand them, to try and convince them to join, to be a part of this intergalactic civilization. And from my understanding of um, what people have said about this book, I think the alien race is very, very different to our own. They have very different views, in particular in terms of gender and sex. Uh, I understand that the aliens spend the majority of their life without a gender, and I don't think they necessarily understand our concept of gender. So it sounds like Le Guin is using the sci-fi genre to kind of explore our own societal norms and maybe challenge some of our preconceptions and our ways of understanding each other and the world. Next up we have The Thing by Alan Dean Foster. So this is actually one of my favourite movies. I really really love the 80s horror movie called The Thing and the book written by Alan Dean Foster was actually based I believe on the screenplay for the actual movie so I think it's very very similar. I think the only differences are that there is a little bit more dialogue in the book and so it's a little bit more detailed perhaps than the movie and that really appeals to me because as I said I really enjoy the movie and anything that gives me a little bit more than that I'm going to be here for. So yeah this is a story that has actually been told uh, a couple of times. I think the original concept came from an author called Joseph Campbell who wrote a novella called Who Goes There in 1938 and that's kind of where this idea first came from and then since then it's obviously been adapted and things and we've got the famous movie um, but it basically tells the story of some researchers that are in Antarctica and they encounter an extraterrestrial being who is able to assimilate and then imitate other organisms so basically it can kind of kill humans and then pretend to be them. So of course that leads to a lot of paranoia in the group when they sort of have this realisation because you have that horrible thing where you don't know who you can trust, you don't know whether your colleague is your colleague or if it is actually the thing pretending to be your colleague. So I love all of the like psychology and all of the um, tension that that builds in the movie and I'm excited to see how that works in the book as well. Next up we have a novella which is At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, so this is obviously short, it's a novella and it's also based on a group of researchers that go to Antarctica and uncover some secrets. I believe in this novella they uncover this ancient civilization and I'm assuming that it gets kind of weird. Obviously H.P. Lovecraft is known for his cosmic horror and um, so I'm sure there's a little bit of that in there as well but of course course it's set in Antarctica so I wanted to include it on this list because it will be perfect for snowy winter aesthetic. Next up we have a book called No Ordinary Star written by M.C. Frank. I'm not gonna lie the cover sold this one to me. I think it's got one of the most gorgeous covers on there. I don't know who did the illustration but if I can find out who I'll put it on the screen because they definitely deserve to be credited because it definitely grabbed my attention and I'm also very intrigued by this story. It sounds quite different. It's very whimsical and possibly a bit more fantasy leaning than sci-fi uh, but it is set in the future so that's why I kind of I'm grouping it here and considering it sci-fi. But yeah, this one sounds so interesting. I'm actually just gonna read you from the blurb. So it says, a soldier is summoned to the North Pole days before the year changes to fix the great clock for a celebration. He has no idea what to do. A girl hunted for the crime of being born almost dies out on the ice. She is rescued by the last polar bear left alive. A library waits for them both. A library built over a span of a hundred years, forgotten in the basement of an ice shack. The world hasn't known hunger or sickness in hundreds of years. It has also forgotten love and beauty. The year is 2025. That is honestly one of the most bizarre blurbs that I've read. I really don't 
know what to expect from this story from that because it sounds kind of whimsical it also sounds I don't know it's just bizarre and I'm intrigued and yeah I want to know more so yeah I had to put that one on the list obviously part of it takes place in the North Pole we've got a girl who almost dies out on the ice so it clearly has that winter aesthetic that we're looking for so yeah I'm super intrigued please let me know if you've read that one because I'm really curious Next up we have a sci-fi book called Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. So this is an LGBT space opera romance and again it's got a really really stunning cover, I really like the colours on this one and this seems to have a lot of tropes that I really enjoy which is why I'm intrigued by it and why I put it on this list. So it's got an arranged marriage trope, it's got the oh no there's only one bed <laughs> trope, it's got an opposite attracts romance and I also think it's quite a slow burn romance and all of those things I tend to enjoy in romance stories and of course it's also a sci-fi so that intrigues me because I don't think I've really read that many sci-fi romances so yeah it sounds interesting it also sounds quite political because it follows two main characters we've got Kiem and we've got Janan who are forced into an arranged marriage after Janan's husband is killed in a spaceship accident but it turns out this was no accident and the two must work together to solve the mystery surrounding his death before political intrigue causes an interplanetary war. So yeah, there's quite a lot of politics going on there as well, which I like. Um, I like the fact that it sounds like it's got a really well-realised world, as well as having a good romance in there by the sounds of the reviews anyway. And I'm assuming by the title, Winter's Orbit, that this is going to have a wintry setting. I did do a little bit of research, couldn't find that many people talking about the setting, but I did find one person who said that it had a snowy, icy aesthetic. So yeah, I'm trusting them. <laughs> <laughs> and the title of this book that this is um, ideal for this list. Okay, moving on to the next one. We've got The Sunlight Pilgrims by Jenny Fagan. So this is a book that I was drawn to because of the author. Jenny Fagan is an author that I've heard quite a lot about and I've been intrigued to try her works. I know that she wrote a really, really popular novella called Hex, which is about a witch or someone on a witch trial. And that was really, really popular. People say that her writing is quite lyrical and I do enjoy lyrical writing sometimes. Um, so I'm intrigued by that. The premise of the story doesn't necessarily grip me that much because it's an apocalypse story and I tend to not love apocalypse type stories for some reason but yeah I want to give it a go because of the author anyway this one is set in the near future during a ice age and the world is freezing and society faces collapse and the book follows Constance and her daughter and also a young man called Dylan and they're all basically trying to survive in Scotland during this new ice age uh, as the world is kind of freezing over and from what I've heard this is a story that is as much about people as it is about survival so I think it's a really close look at how these three characters in particular deal with that situation and it's supposed to be um, yeah like quite human um, if that makes sense. Moving on we have a modern classic sci-fi which is The Snow Queen written by Joan D. Vinge. Um, so this one has actually won several awards so that intrigues me and it's obviously a, a play on the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen and if you know me at all then you might know that I do really enjoy fairy tale retellings but I don't think I've ever read a fairy tale retelling that is sci-fi so that really intrigues me and the blurb sounds also very very interesting again I'm just going to read you from the back so it says the imperious winter colonists have ruled the planet Tiamat for 150 years deriving wealth from the slaughter of seamers but soon galactic stargate will close isolating Tiamat and the 150 year reign of the summer primitives will begin their only chance of surviving the change is if the ageless, corrupt Snow Queen can destroy destiny with an act of genocide. The Snow Queen is not without competition, as Moon, a young summer sibyl, battles to break a conspiracy that spans space. 
And then it says, interstellar politics, a millennia long secret conspiracy, and a civilization whose hidden machineries might still control the fate of worlds, all form the background of this spectacular hard science fiction novel. So yeah, there's a lot of about that that really intrigues me. Obviously it sounds quite political, it sounds very, very intense, it's probably dealing with some heavy themes, it says that it's a hard science fiction, so uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think it means like it's very, very well realised and kind of logical and makes sense, if, if you know what I mean. A lot of attention to detail has been paid to the scientific elements to make it feel realistic. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but yeah, this one's got another gorgeous cover and just sounds really intriguing so I definitely want to give that one a go at some point and then the last book may be more fantasy leaning but I'm including it on this list because I've wanted to pick it up for a while and also because it is set in an alternate world so I kind of think that's a little bit sci-fi but anyway it's a story called A Lapse Away by Darcy Little Badger so this is a story that takes place in an alternate reality where Earth has been changed by magic. And we follow our main character who's a girl called Alatsawe and she actually has a rather unique gift which she has inherited from um, her ancestors. And it's the gift of being able to raise dead animals. So she can raise the ghosts of dead animals, which is kind of spooky. And there's also a mystery at the heart of this one. So I think it's definitely a story that blends genres because it seems to have a bit of a noir element to it as well because her cousin is actually murdered. And I think she has to use her abilities to try and figure out what happened to him. And along the way, she ends up uncovering some dark secrets about where she lives. And yeah, that sounds so intriguing. I think it's supposed to be both spooky, obviously with the kind of necromancy elements, but also quite cozy because I think there's a focus on family and yeah it just really intrigues me this one and um, again it's got a gorgeous cover I've heard some fantastic reviews about this one and yeah I'm just very intrigued so that brings me to the end of this list that was 10 wintry aesthetic sci-fi books um please let me know if you've read any of these i'd love to hear your thoughts let me know which one you think that i should pick up first or if there's any other sci-fi that you would recommend to me because as i said in the beginning of this video it's a genre that i would like to try a bit more of and yeah i hope you're having a fantastic day whatever it is you are doing and i'm wishing you all the best i hope you're all staying warm if it's cold where you are and don't forget to like this video if you liked it, do subscribe if you want to see some more from me and I guess I'll see you next time with another video. Bye!